All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Josh Tingela. I'm on the Apache Flex PMC, um, although I do work on a number of other projects that are related to FlexJS. Um, and one of those projects is actually what I'm going to talk about today. Um, I recently uh, started building an extension for Visual Studio Code to add support for ActionScript and MXML, which are the main languages used to develop FlexJS applications. Um, so let me, let me start out with a little bit of history to uh, help you understand why I built the extension, um, and then we'll jump in and actually um, start creating a project and going through the steps of development there. Um, so before Flex came to Apache, um, it started out as an Adobe product. Um, it had a pretty, pretty active ecosystem, um, a lot of developers, different development environments, um, such as Adobe's Flash Builder, which uh, you saw in the last talk, um, IntelliJ IDEA, FDT, Flash Develop. There were, there were many of them. Uh, FlexJS is the next generation of the Flex SDK um, that uh, runs applications directly in the web browser with JavaScript instead of relying on a browser plugin like Flash Player. Um, the FlexJS SDK um, can be used with the existing IDEs. Um, however, they require um, some extra configuration um, to get them to work in the best state. And um, there are still some quirks, especially related to debugging, that make it um, not, not exactly the ideal situation. Um, and so I felt that in order to help FlexJS grow and um, become more interesting to, develop, to developers, I wanted to make sure that there was a better environment where FlexJS would be a first class citizen. And that is where Visual Studio Code comes in. Uh, Visual Studio Code is um, an open source project from Microsoft. Uh, it's free to download. Um, it um, has a very vibrant ecosystem with uh, a lot of developers checking it out and finding that it works really well for their workflows. Um, there are frequent updates every month. New features are coming out, um, and it's really picking up a lot of steam. Uh, one of the best things about Visual Studio Code is that it supports extensions. Um, not just extensions for like the languages that are built in when you first download it, but you can actually add support for new languages. And so I decided to start working on a language extension to add support for ActionScript and MXML. Um, and I released this extension under the name NextGen ActionScript. Uh, Visual Studio Code sits somewhere between a basic text editor and a full-fledged IDE. It's in this like happy middle ground that, at least for me, is makes for a better workflow. You can open up any random text file and start editing. You'll get some text highlighting and things like that. Or you can actually create a workspace and start building a more full-fledged project with that's able to run the compiler and do debugging and things like that. Um, and so when, when you're working in a language like Action, ActionScript or MXML, um, you, you'll be able to take advantage of these uh, code intelligence features, like being able to complete member variables and functions on an instance of a class, or if you're calling a function, it'll give you, you know, the, the list of parameters that are available on that function. Um, as you type, errors and warnings will update in real time as you add, add or delete a new character. Um, it has knowledge of what the different symbols in your files are, so it'll know that a variable is of a certain type or what class a method is defined on and things like that. You'll actually be able to um, go to where anything is defined by um, you know, using the mouse and uh, clicking while holding the controller command key. Um, it knows all the symbols in your document, in your workspace, so you're able to search those and navigate around your project uh, pretty easily. And you can even rename things and uh, things like that. Uh, Visual Studio Code also provides um, a debugging UI um, that you can use in any language where there is a debugger extension available. Um, so you'll be able to do things like print to a debug console, 
um, add breakpoints so that it will pause when you get to a certain line of code or it'll stop at an, extent, at an exception. Um, you can step through your code line by line. Um, you can see the function call stack and actually see what, what variables are in scope at the various points um, of execution. Um, you can dig down into the properties of any object that's in scope as deeply as you need. Um, and so most of this talk today, I'm going to um, actually um, show you live how to um, do each step of the development process. Um, let's start with um, installation. I have a few more slides before I get into that. Um, so what you'll need for FlexJS development um, obviously includes Visual Studio Code. You can get that from code.visualstudio.com. Um, this is a cross-platform editor, so it's available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And FlexJS, uh, the SDK, uh, works on all, all three of those platforms as well. Uh, once you have Visual Studio Code, um, when you run it, you'll be able to go to the extensions view and install extensions from the Visual Studio Marketplace. Um, so if you go there and you search for ActionScript, you'll be able to find the NextGen ActionScript extension. Um, you'll see this green, ins green install button there right next to the, the extension. You just click that, and after a moment, it'll ask you to restart, and uh, it will be good to go. And then finally, you will also need um, Apache FlexJS. Uh, there are two different ways to, that, to install it. You can use the Flex SDK installer, which will have a more guided process where you go through a wizard and choose where you want to save it on your hard drive and what dependencies you need and things like that. Um, and then you can also, if you have uh, Node.js installed, you can install FlexJS using the Node Package Manager uh, using the command there on the left. And then the final setup part is telling the next-gen ActionScript extension in Visual Studio Code where to find FlexJS. And there's three different ways to do that. Um, there are a couple of different environment variables where the extension will look to see if FlexJS is defined there, and it will use it automatically if it's found. Otherwise, um, there is a setting in Visual Studio Code um, that you can pass the path to your SDK, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go into creating a new project. And we're actually going to do that right now in Visual Studio Code. All right. Um, first, here's the extensions view where you're able to uh, search in the marketplace. Um, you'll see next gen action script extension pops up. I already have it installed here, so um, we don't need to install that right now. All right, now to create a new project for FlexJS, first we need to uh, create the workspace in a folder. So we open the folder. Um, I'm just gonna create a new empty folder on my desktop. I'll call it my first FlexJS project. And open that up. And this will be our workspace where we add files and source code and things like that. Um, next, I want to tell Visual Studio Code uh, where to find the FlexJS SDK. So if we go into the preferences, um, we'll choose the setting option here. And there are two places where you can um, add settings uh, for your development environment. There are the user settings, which will apply to any workspace that you open. So if you just wanted to set up FlexJS once and have it work in every workspace, you could set them here. And then there's also the workspace settings, which will apply only to the, the new folder that we created uh, just a moment ago. Um, I'm gonna set this up in the workspace settings. And so uh, you'll see as I type, um, the available settings will actually show up in the completion list. Um, you might remember from the slide earlier that we're looking for nextgenas.sdk.editor. And then we'll set that to a path 
to the SDK. I have that downloaded on my desktop, so I'll just set that up here and save that. And now our workspace is ready to use Flex.js. If I go back here to the file explorer, you'll see that the .vs code directory was created and there's a file in there called settings.json, and that's where our workspace settings are, are saved. Um, now, to tell the workspace, uh, yes, question. Well, workspace settings overrides user settings? Correct. Okay. Workspace settings override the, the user settings. Okay, now I'm going to create a file named asconfig.json. And this is sort of the main prog project configuration file for your workspace. Um, it includes all of the compiler settings and some additional options as well. And this is a JSON file. Um, I'm going to set up one compiler option to start, and then I'm going to specify the entry point for our application. So I'm going to set the targets compiler option um, by default, Flex.js will produce a JavaScript, a uh, set of JavaScript files for our application, and it will create a Swift file that will run in Adobe Air or Flash Player. Um, for our purposes, we only need the JavaScript, so I'm going to set that to JS Flex. Um, similar to the settings file, you'll see that completion is available within this file. Uh, Visual Studio Code is aware of what what the format is, and so if you're trying to remember the name of anything, um, you just can hit uh, control space and that'll bring up a list of all the different options. Um, and then I'm going to, oops, add a files field, and I'm going to specify uh, which, which class is going to be the entry point of our application. I haven't created this file yet, but I will in just a moment. So I'm going to create a source directory, and then I'm going to create a file named my first flexjs project.mxml. And that will be the first class that runs when we launch our application. So let me create that source directory and the mxml file. And to save you, save us some time from watching me type out a basic application and make a bunch of typos, I made a quick little snippet here. Uh, so this is probably one of the simpler uh, Flex.js applications that you'll see. Um, we use the express component set. It contains one view, which contains a button with some text. Um, now I want to um, start adding a little bit of code to this to show you some of the code intelligence features that you can use uh, while you're uh, writing your code. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an event listener for this button when it's clicked. You'll see as I type, um, the completion will pop up um, offering types for this event parameter on the function. And when we actually complete one of those, the import for this class is automatically added because it's a, diff a different package. Um, I'm just gonna write some basic code here. Um, I'm not trying to develop a full-fledged application. It's mostly just to show you some of the features you can use in Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna do a little bit of math, and then I'm going to show the result in an, in an alert dialog that pops up above the application. You'll see as I make the call to this function, the signature help pops up to tell us about the parameters. Then let me go up in the MXML and add this listener to the button. So I want to listen to the click event, 
And then inside of here, I can actually use completion to call the listener and pass in the event. Um, between these two quotes is actually secretly a function body. Um, and so Visual Studio Code is aware of that and can treat this small section of MXML as action script. Um, you'll notice when I hover my mouse over the call to the event listener, we can actually see the class where it's defined. We can see it's a method. We can see the parameters there. Um, if we do the same over the one of these imports, you can see what package this class is in, what it extends, any interfaces it implements, um, and things like that. If we hold down the control key on Windows or Linux or the command key on Mac, and then we put our mouse over a symbol and then click on it, it will actually take us to the definition of whatever that symbol is. And so when I do that here, you can see that the cursor moves here to the uh, to where the listener is defined. And then one last thing I want to show you here is that we're able to rename symbols as well. So let's say I don't like the name sum, and I want to change that to result. Oh, that's not good. Well, if that did work, um, it would just change both of these uh, these lines where the variable is name summed to result. Okay, so we now we have a, a basic application here, um, and now we want to compile it, and then eventually we will run it. Okay, so Visual Studio Code has sort of a universal file that it understands regardless of which language you're using. And this file is called tasks.json. Um, it's able to run any executable that you want, for example, a compiler, or maybe you want to run some kind of test runner or something like that. Um, whether you're using ActionScript and MXML for Flex.js, or if you're writing a JavaScript or C or whatever language you want to use, you can create this file in Visual Studio Code, and it will integrate with some of the features for building a project um, that are available. Now, you might remember from earlier, we created a file named asconfig.json, and this file included um, some of the compiler options that we're going to use to build our Flex.js application. Inside tasks.json, we could call the compiler directly and pass in all of the same compiler options. Uh, but then we'd have them duplicated in a couple of places and we'd have to try to keep them in sync and that's not really an ideal situation. Um, and so I created this other utility called asconfigc, which reads the asconfig.json file and actually parses all of the compiler arguments and calls the compiler using all of those values. So you can keep all of your options in one place and not have to worry about any kind of duplication. And so you can install that from Node Package Manager, and that's what we're going to be using to build this project. So let me go back into Visual Studio Code. All right, to create our tasks.json file, um, we're going to open up the command palette, which you can find in the view menu right here, command palette. Um, you can also bring that up with a keyboard shortcut. Um, it's Control Shift P on Windows and Linux, or Command Shift P on Mac OS. P is in palette. And so we'll bring that up, and then type tasks, and you'll see the second option here: Configure Task Runner for ActionScript and asconfig.json. And that will automatically create this file for us and populate it with um, some useful um, arguments to pass to asconfigc. So the two most important fields right here is the command field. This tells Visual Studio Code which executable you want it to run. 
In this case, we're going to run asconfigc, uh, but you could run anything else you wanted. You can actually point to where the compiler executable is, or if you wanted to run some other kind of task runner like Maven or something like that, you could put that in here. Um, and then we also have arguments to pass to that executable. Um, for asconfigc, we're going to tell it to create a debug build, and then we also tell it where to find the flexjs SDK. You'll notice that this is already populated for us. Um, the next-gen action script extension will look in Visual Studio Code settings and find that path for us and just put it in there as a convenience. Uh, but we can change that to any SDK we want and edit this file however we please um, going forward. So if you press Control shift b or Command-Shift-B, that will run uh, the main build task in task.json. So I'll use that shortcut now. And, ah, that's why. Okay, I named that file wrong. So it's not my first Flex.js project, it's my first Flex.js application. Okay. Okay, so now the compiler runs and builds the project correctly. Um, you can see that a bin directory was created here. That's where Flex.js normally um, creates its output for um, JavaScript applications. Here's some of the generated JavaScript. Um, you can see here our on button click um, listener for our event. Um, another file worth pointing out here is the index.html file. This is also generated by the compiler, and it just bootstraps our application and starts calling our JavaScript code. Um, and that's what we'll actually launch in the debugger in a moment. Okay, another standard file in Visual Studio Code is a file named launch.json. Um, this is very similar to task.json. It's, it's a file that Visual Studio Code understands no matter what language you're using or some kind of runtime or whatever, whatever it is that you've built. If you want to run it and debug it, you'll use launch.json. Um, so the next-gen ActionScript extension um, doesn't have a debugger for running JavaScript code in a browser, um, but there are uh, separate extensions available for uh, the major web browsers like Google Chrome, Firefox, Edge, uh, Safari, even Safari running on um, an iOS device that you have plugged into your computer with USB. Um, Flex.js can also produce uh, JavaScript code from ActionScript for Node.js and um, of course, you can still continue to build for uh, the Adobe Flash runtimes if you want, and there's a debugger for that built into the next-gen ActionScript extension. Um, so for this presentation, we're going to um, use the debugger for Chrome, um, but there are debuggers for other browsers, and the configuration is pretty similar. There's just a, a few minor, minor tweaks here and there, so um, what we learn for one browser, we can uh, that knowledge can go on to other browsers as well. So we'll, we'll install the, this extension from the extensions view just like we did uh, with the next-gen ActionScript extension. Just search for Chrome debug and it should pop up and you can install it. Uh, so as you recall, for Flex.js applications, we use ActionScript in MXML. Um, but we produce JavaScript that can be run in the browser. Um, ideally, we would want to be able to debug in our original language where we developed them in. And so web browsers have something called source maps that tell debuggers, okay, if you're running the JavaScript code on line 16, character 4, that actually goes back to line 6, character 2 in, in this ActionScript file. 
Um, and it's, it's very similar to like how you, if you were building an application in C or Java, it would produce machine code or byte code. And the debugger needs some way to know that, okay, this byte what here maps back to your original code there. So it makes it so JavaScript is kind of like the byte code for other languages like ActionScript. Um, so Flex.js is able to produce source maps and there is a source map um, compiler option that you can use. Um, and we will add that to our asconfig.json um, to tell the compiler to produce those for us. So let's jump in there and do that. Uh, we open up the debug view and you'll see here it says no configurations. We want to add one. And then I already have the Chrome, the, de the debugger for Chrome extension installed, so that will show up in the list now, and I'll choose that. Um, other browsers will show up there as well. You can see I have the Firefox extension installed too. And then it will generate a launch.json file for us. Um, it has a couple of uh, default configurations here. Uh, we don't need this attach one at all for our project. Um, and we're actually going to tweak things a little bit on this other one. So the default um, configuration that it, cr it creates um, tells Chrome to open up a URL. And it assumes that we have some kind of local web server running on our machine, and so it tells, us to, tells it to open up localhost. Um, as your ap application gets bigger, you're probably going to want to do something like that. Um, there's various security restrictions and stuff that you uh, need to care about. So that's probably what you'll be using a lot of the time. Um, for this quick demo here, as part of the presentation, I'm just going to open up a file from the local file system. Um, so you can see I replaced the URL field with a file field, and then I'm pointing that to the index.html file that the compiler produced. Um, this workspace root token here is standard in Visual Studio Code. Um, before it launches the project, it will, re will replace this with the actual path to our workspace. Um, there are a couple of other fields I wanted to point out. This source maps field tells Chrome to look for the source maps that the, that the compiler will generate for us. Um, not all browsers require you to do that. Um, each, each extension has its own different configuration options. So for example, I know that Firefox will automatically find the source maps and simply use them. Um, so it depends on which browser you're using. And then this last field, pre-launch task, is a uh, standard field that is available in any launch configuration. Um, this tells Visual Studio Code to run a task before it starts debugging. So in this case, we want it to run asconfigc to tell it to build our project before we run it in the browser. And so, um, let's go to asconfig.json and add our source map compiler option because uh, we'll want that for debugging. And then if I build again, um, we can see here in the bin directory that there's a new file here that ends with the extension .js.map. And this is the source map that the browser uses. Um, you can see it basically says when you're running this JavaScript file, the actual source is here in this MXML file. And then this line here with the mappings is kind of a obscure format that somehow tells it, okay, this, this line in this character map back to this line in that character. And then uh, I just want to launch that now, and we'll see this application running in the web browser. So we have our new configuration here in the debug view. If I hit the start debugging button, you'll see down there that we have the pre-launch task, so it's going to run the compiler first. And then here is our application running in Chrome. If I click that button, you'll see the alert pop up with the text that we told it to. So now that we have that running in the browser, 
let's go back to our MXML file and try out some debugging tasks. So I'm going to add a breakpoint in our event listener. And so now when I click on that button, it's going to stop at this breakpoint and we'll be able to inspect the current state of our application. So I'll go back to the browser. Uh, the breakpoints are updated in real time, so I didn't need to relaunch or anything. Uh, I click the button and it will jump back to Visual Studio Code. You'll see in the browser though that it's paused, so it hasn't shown the alert yet because it stopped at the breakpoint. And now we're on this line of code. If I go into the debug view, you can see on the left here that all of the variables that are in the local scope are displayed. So for instance, this uh, event listener has a parameter for the event. We can see that here, and we can drill down and see the various properties of the event um, as they are in the current application state. Um, you can see our local variables A, B, and some are still undefined because we haven't run those lines of code yet. Um, so let me step through those, and we can see that update. A is now 2, B is 5, and the sum is 7. And then also on the left here, uh, you can see the call stack. Um, and we're, we're in our listener here, the on button click method here on our application. Um, if we go up a level, this is actually the function scope I was talking about for the for listening to the click event in our MXML. Um, when I clicked on that, that line is highlighted, so we can see that that is where the ex execution is happening. Um, if we wanted to go further up the call stack, um, you can see there are classes in the FlexJS framework that are in there, so we would be able to um, go to those classes and see where, where, which line it's actually executing on. Then if I can just resume, go back to our browser, and everything continues as normal. Um, there was one thing I forgot to show a bit earlier. Um, so we were able to control click or command click on any symbol in this file. If we wanted to do it right here on this alert class, um, this is a class that is part of the FlexJS framework. Um, and we can actually go there and see the original um, action script source code um, for this component. And so you can see um, all of the all of the original code is there. We can see the comments, we can see the documentation. Um, and so that's a really good way to gain an understanding of the framework and um, be able to have uh, direct access to all of the documentation and things. Let me try that rename again now that I realized that that uh, I, I was referencing the wrong file name. So there we go. Okay, so the rename is now working. Okay. So I have links here to um, all of the various things that um, are downloaded for this workflow, um, links to documentation and things. Um, that is all I have today, so um, are there any questions? Okay, thank you.